Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher from Mirror Film, and today I'm going over all of my Earth Mini Pro G2 rig. And uh, this is gonna be a pretty laid back and chill video, not much editing, so if you're not into that, you may not like this video. But I wanted to go over sort of the camera rig that I'm running right now because this has changed pretty substantially since I initially bought the camera when I did make a rig video and it was <laughs> it's pretty stripped down compared to this. And there's still a few more things I'm gonna be buying. Actually, there's some stuff in the mail right now that'll add to it and I'll talk about those. But I just wanted to kind of go over what's going on here and sort of why I've been using some of these things and why I've changed what I've used and maybe it'll help you build yours uh, or just give you some cool ideas. So obviously at the base here is the Ursa Mini Pro G2. It's the 4.6K model. Uh, as a camera, this thing is incredible. The video looks so good out of it. Having Blackmagic RAW, which is constantly updating and editing in DaVinci Resolve makes it just that much better. So, I mean, you know, I'm not going to review the camera, but it's it's incredible. So, um, I'll probably start, well, I'll start with the battery because that hasn't changed that much. So, back here is the uh, HyperCore uh, Core Slim batteries. So, these are the 98 watt hours. I'm thinking about picking up some of the, like, 158 watt hour because... I'll talk about in a minute. There's lots of accessories that are going on um, and some things that I take on and off the camera that, you know, it just, it's not bad, but I mean, you know, right now we can run the camera for about two and a half, almost three hours on a battery. Um, this monitor's changed that a little bit, so, uh, but I'll go into that more in a little bit. So mainly that's the power right now. Um, so kind of starting from the bottom up, uh, right at the bottom here, we have sort of the quick release plate, but this is the quick release plate for the shoulder rig, which I'll mention in a minute. So this is actually the Axler QR VCT14. So this is a VCT plate, which is made to hold shoulder rig, um, you know, like shoulder pad sort of style quick release plates. So I can easily take this thing on and off by just pulling it um, and go to a shoulder rig and then go back on a tripod. So. That's from Axler. They did send that over to me. Uh, you know, we're not sponsored or anything, but they did send that over. And then um, above that is the actual shoulder rig, which this is the small rig shoulder rig, which is made for the Ursa. Um, it's pretty nice. I mean, I, you know, it's really just kind of a shoulder rig. There's really not a whole lot extra to it. Um, it has the RE, uh, I think Rosette, or what I heard you pronounce those, the mounts over here and on both sides. And of course, you have the rails underneath which the rails um, are also the small rig ones that come with it. They are, I think, the 12-inch carbon fiber, and they hold most of what's going on. So anyway, small rig on the bottom. And then also, uh, so one thing that is in the mail right now um, is the small rig side plate. And the reason why I'm getting the side plate is there are a lot of accessories that I'll talk more about in a second um, that need to be mounted to the side of the camera and it's just too hard to do it without having a nice mount and it moves this handle down a little bit. So it kind of, it moves this down and sort of out of the way and gives me more room to mount things. Um, and this is also from small rig. There's actually a lot of small rig and I'm, there's no sponsors. I just, uh, I really like their stuff. Um, so yeah, th that is also a small rig side plate and to sort of go along with that is, whoop, that's not supposed to happen. I'm supposed to loosen that a little bit. Um, which actually, this is on the Nitro, I think N8 head or whatever it's called from Manfrotto. Um, the top plate, which is also, um, also from Small Rig. And uh, the top plate's awesome, but one of the big reasons why I actually just bought this top plate recently is because it works with this Small Rig monitor mount right here. Um, so I was actually watching the behind the scenes for the Mr. Beast um, Squid Game, and they were showing this monitor, which I'll also talk about in a second, a lot of in the futures. Uh, and they were using this monitor mount and Zach and I actually went on uh, B&H and tracked this thing down. And it's great because it has the locking pins and it has a really big like connector. So what ends up happening is, is it's very tight on the monitor and it doesn't let the monitor swivel when you're moving it. And it's kind of like the red style. So it swivels up and down and it swivels left to right. Um, and you can really kind of customize the position you need. And uh, it's really sturdy. So the reason why I got the top plate was because this has the larger, I think it's three eighths um, threading as well as the connector pins next to it. So the connector pins kind of hold it in place along with the threading. So I thought I might as well get the top plate and then get that so that way they can go together. Um, this handle, to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure what it is. It's okay. I probably would prefer a, a better top handle um, especially because this one's kind of <laughs> ruined some of the threads on. Uh, so if anyone recommends a good top handle, let me know. 
Um, yeah, so that's the cheese plate on top. And again, that'll match the side plate um, all from small rig. And while we're up here, I also mentioned this is the, uh, which again, you can kind of see is why it's threaded out here. This is the uh, quick release for the easy rig. So that's pretty simple. And then also up top, I have the tentacle sync um, time code device. So this is connected through a cable that goes to the time code in the back of the Ursa. We'll move this back this way. On uh, the back of the Ursa back here where you can see there's a time code um, reference in. So that cable goes to the top to the tentacle sink. And of course, um, oops, I destroyed that again. If I have other tentacle sink devices, that'll all sync right up. Oh, I think we're close. Um, so yeah, any other tentacle sync devices will sync. Also just using like the Mix Pre 3, it's just nice to have that flexibility. So the tentacle sync lives up top along with the big old monitor, which I guess I'll talk about now. Uh, up here, and that is the uh, Blackmagic Designs 12G SDI HDR Video Assist. Now, I was using a small HD 5-inch Focus um, OLED version, and I really did like that, and the OLED, OLED was super nice. There's two main problems with it. Uh, one was that it was a 5-inch display, and having the 5-inch display it just, it's not enough, you know, when you're out in the field and you're trying to really see something, uh, it's just difficult. You know, you can miss focus, you can miss that something's in frame. And the other advantage to this is that this is a recorder. Now, I won't say that I'm gonna do a ton of recording to this, but it is really nice to have this as a backup. You can have a feed recording into SDI ports over here. There's also a headphone jack, so you can you know utilize that as well as some audio inputs. So the fact that you can record to this is really handy, but you can also use it when you're doing live streams. So when we're doing a live stream, we could have this as sort of our reference monitor um, or a program monitor and use that on the go. Um, the other thing is if we're shooting a short film and I want to have a wireless video feed to a larger monitor for me, uh, I can use this guy and then the camera operator can use whatever monitor they want, whether if they have one they bring uh, or they could use the, you know, the Focus or the Shinobi or whatever. Um, so having this nice big monitor is really great. And like I said, for one man banning it or, you know, when Zach and I are going out and doing shoots, this thing is super nice. Um, the other thing is that it is an HDR monitor, so I'm seeing more of what I'm actually getting on the Ursa than if I were to be using the Focus LED um, or OLED, which is just an 8-bit monitor. Even though it's OLED, a lot of people think that immediately it's like, oh, well, it must be like 10-bit, but it's not. Um, this is a 10-bit 12 SDI uh, monitor. The thing that you have to think about, though, is that you need a 12 S, uh, 8, 12G SDI cable. Um, so I got this one, I think it's a LAN part, and it's just kind of like red. Uh, you can probably see it on camera. And um, I'll link everything, of course, down in the description below but that carries that 12G SDI signal out and uh, make sure that I am, you know, having the, the, the best looking picture on the display. Um, and of course you can load LUTs into this like any other thing. And um, yeah, so what I'm doing to power that is something I'm gonna be talking about a little bit in a second is I'm using a dummy adapter, a dummy NPF adapter that is right now just going into the back of this battery. Soon in the future, uh, I actually have a Condor Blue um, D-Tap like, uh, I don't want to say extender, but kind of like adapter that has like four D-Taps on it. So actually, I'll probably put it over here. Um, so one will go to the battery and then it'll split into four and I'll run the monitor. And then I'll also run what I quite often use, the um, Hollyland Pro 400S, which is their 400S Pro, which is their wireless video. So if I want to run wireless video, I can put that thing up here power the monitor, the wireless video. I mean, I guess I could power other stuff too, another monitor if I had two or you know another device that used um, DTAP. I can all run those off of one adapter to the battery, which is super handy and just makes for a much simpler, you know, just power distribution really. So that is also on the way. Uh, and the nice thing is that'll fit over here on the side where that small rig side plate is. So that'll easily just connect there. And then I can have this and the tentacle sink I'm planning on having over here. Um, and then that way I can also put any wireless video feed on this side as well. Kind of like the, the workhorse side. Um, yeah. And uh, again, you know, the power adapter is just that. And then if we jump over here to the front of the camera, uh, well actually I guess kind of the side first. We can see that right now I'm actually using the Tilta 
um, follow focus. This is actually their cheaper follow focus. I think it's the, uh, let's see if I can see it, FFT06. Um, I really like this thing. I like that it is, uh, it's rubber and it feels very solid. Uh, there is definitely a like little bit of flex. You can probably see it right there. Maybe that's something I can tighten up. It's not the end of the world, I gotta say. It's not like it's making a huge difference. Because typically I'm not rack focusing back and forth. Like I'm not going twice. So um, yeah, and then I'm using Tilta um, focus rings, like the adjustable ones for a lot of the lenses that we use. So like, you know, right now the 18 to 35 is on there, which is what does a lot of the sort of work. Um, and then, you know, on the 50 Sigma we have as well. And then we also have a Canon 85 and then a Canon 135. So using those on there to make it really easy. I kind of wish we had cinema lenses, but of course if we did have cinema lenses, we could easily use this guy with it. And I do also have a lens support and I do have longer, I think 18 inch rails. So if we had a longer cinema lens, we could do that as well. And then up front, I'm using the small rig. I believe this is called like the carbon fiber light or something like that, uh, matte box. It's their $99 version. Uh, and this thing's really cool because uh, there is a top flag that I don't have right now and I don't typically use. But this thing you can see is holding a filter in there, which is just a clear filter that I just kind of leave in there to sort of protect the lens. Um, and it also, at some point, we want to try using some tricks with it, like Vaseline and stuff like that, to see how that looks. But, because uh, they're, they're really cheap. The clear filters are like 30 bucks. But yeah, um, it, it, you know, it of course helps with flares, which is, a, is actually really handy. It does hold filters, although I don't use that as often as I probably should because uh, there's built-in ND in the, the Ursa. But the one thing that it really does, which is gonna sound stupid, but it looks like a video camera. And when sometimes people don't know what you're doing, when they see this, they instantly think that this looks like a film camera and they understand that, oh, they are filming something, um, which can be really handy depending on what you're doing. So I actually put this out in front quite often too. Like I said, obviously it, it blocks the light and getting those nasty lens layers, especially on our vintage lenses. But more than that, it really just makes it look like we're shooting video and then people kind of understand what we're doing and either they get out of the way or they sort of just have a better idea of what we're doing. Um, and I've noticed since we've used this that it's actually become a lot easier for people to understand what we're doing. Um, and then underneath here, I have another set of those uh, RE Rosette, uh, I think that's how I pronounce, adapters. This way I can extend, like if I wanted to put, these, these come off too. Um, I could put another handle because I do have a small rig handle that I can use to sort of make the full shoulder rig. Um, that's just an arm and a handle. So I can do it either from the back here or do it up from the front, depending on what's more comfortable. Uh, and I also do have a Tilta uh, motion arm that works with this monitor. So if I wanna move this monitor off the camera, I can do that as well. Uh, but yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much everything. Like I said, the Condor Blue, um, uh, that's gonna go on the other side here. The Condor Blue uh, power, you know, distribution sort of uh, DTAP adapter is gonna go over here. And then that side plate as well. And then I did also get a couple BNC or SDI um, covers just so I can cover up some of these SDIs that are just sort of like exposed. And that's pretty much it. Um, I gotta say, I do really love this rig and it's, you know, it's pretty versatile. We do weddings with this. Um, usually I'm not using the follow focus for the weddings, so it's a little bit lighter because this, this base plate down here, the actual uh, VCT plate and all that stuff gets really heavy. So that's usually gone. And um, you know, we don't need the tentacle sink for that. We don't need the follow focus. So that adds a lot less weight. So you can strip it down and just pull it off. Um, but this is kind of like the commercial cinema rig. You know, if we're sort of doing something cool and fun, this is the, the go-to. So anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, let me know if there's any co uh, components that you think I should get or any components that you're interested in or wanna know more about. I'd love to answer some questions. So anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later.